Hello friends and welcome to the Collective Awakening podcast. Chris and uh, Stephen of the Purple Mountain were here and of course we welcome our wonderful guest Jenny Moore. Hey! It sounds like Sarah. It's like you said out of me. I know. <laughs> Jenny's been a, a great friend of ours and has uh, served the Purple Mountain many, many times since we started really. Yes. I think you were one of the first mediums to visit here. And yeah. um, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and the first question I want to ask you, actually, yeah. is... <laughs> I don't think it was going to come. I know. Is about your journey, how you started on this journey. And I've heard me. many stories. You're, you're, a, you're a world-class storyteller, Jenny. Oh, gosh. Well, I've got all day now. I'm down. But, yeah. but I can't remember to my memory of hearing your story about what actually drew you into this work and what you've come to do. It's, it's a bit of a funny one. Um, when I was about three, we lived in Salford. And I always remember, that I think it was one of my earliest times where I always knew that spirit was around. Yeah. I always knew that there was something. I didn't know what it was. Obviously, you're three years old. But I always knew there was something. <laughs> and then, we obviously living in Salford, when I was about six or seven, I went and joined the local church on my own to go and find God. Because I knew he lived in this house. So, and then I started going to church on a Sunday on my own. I mean, man, you know, we all just lived in Salford and was just like, oh, right, where are you going? I'm going to church. See you later. And at six, seven, seven, about seven, eight years old, and I started, and then I joined the guides, and, do you know what I mean? Or the Girl Brigade, as it was. And they were in this, this church, which I loved it because it was still in the chapel, on Chapel Street. And I used to go in there and still always knew there was something about it. And then we moved up to where we currently live. In, in Lee, in Astley. And there, there's a great big mine. It's called Astley Pit. And me and the kids used to go and play on there. And me and this other girl used to sit. And I used to say to her, do you know there's a pit accident here? Mm. And, I, and all round where we, well, as we moved in, it was all very much fields as it was. Yeah. And it's all got a lot of history. There's Cromwell soldiers on there. Um, there's Lord Tilsley, all of the, the, the history that we know, as you do where, wherever you live. And yet as a kid, me and my friend Liz, who always said that we was, we've got burnt on the stake in Salem. But we used to go hunting for ghosts in this little old house that was across in the fields, all in, hidden up in by bushes. And we used to go in there looking for ghosts. And then the Lady of the Lake, obviously, because everyone's got one, <laughs> aren't they? And then the Grey Lady in the woods. And we used to just go looking for ghosts and and things of that nature. And by which time we're only 10, um, 10 or 11. And then my mum then turned to be a Jehovah's Witness. Anyway. <laughs> so obviously we all got drawn into that. But this one particular day, I always remember my dad used to work nights at the time. And I used to sleep in the front room with my mum. And this one day, or one night, we could hear this load of striking and a load of rat noise. And right in front of us is a field. And as we looked out, there was this child, about two o'clock in the morning, this child, about this big, on the field, screaming. But you could hear people screaming for her. So obviously, me and my mum ran down, opens the doors, and there was these people screaming, where is it, where is it? whatever the child's name was. And my mum's going, oh, she's over here. You said my mum ran over and go and get her. She's, she's over here. But my mum didn't go over because there was a woman stood with her. And this woman was just stood there like that, and this baby was like, crying. All these people come running down and as they turned the corner to go into the field, the woman disappeared. Uh -huh. And I stood there and I went, did you see that, ma'am? And my mother went, clip, get in. <laughs> really? Wow. And she, I went, where did the lady go? She, Don't ever speak about it again, get in. And from that day to this, it never happened. So, and that's it, that just got me fueled even more. But I've always, even when I've been a kid, I always wanted to be the witch. And when Harry Potter come up, I was, <laughs> oh, I was absolutely gobsmacked. Harry Potter had the story that I used to tell everybody. My mum and dad don't like me. They're actually just my adoptive parents. My real ones are going to turn up at any point. Yeah. Harry Potter comes on the telly. What's this about? Where is Hogwarts? I, I need to go. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I always wanted to be the witch with the broomstick and making potions and spells. Didn't realise I was going to be the medium. But deep down I did. 
because this one day I'd bagged it from school. Well, I'd taken the afternoon off for a bit of research. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there was a programme on the telly, you know, like the one o'clock shows? Yeah. Pow Mal at one or whatever it was. And they had Doris Stokes on. I didn't know who she was. And I sat there watching this lady, knowing I'm going to be her. And by which time I was about 13. And I knew then I was going to be a medium. But all them years before, I just was going to be a witch with a broomstick and some, yeah. a lot of potions and stuff like that. Because that's what we used to go and do. Me and my friend would go across the fields looking for flowers and herbs and making potions. It, it's always been within us since, gosh, I was three or four. So you've always had that knowing, did you? That, do you feel that's come back from a past life? Yeah, I, I, that? yeah. Because I, I, I think to myself, because I've always wanted to be the herbalist, but I know it. Yeah, it's it, yeah. an instinctive knowing about putting things together and masonry in oils, and I mean just doing things. And that's why now I'm the aromatherapist and yeah. the reflexologist. I do holistic medicine because I don't want to go to to learn brain surgery. It's not who I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to go into the field and go and pick what we need. Yeah. Come back and bash it and then make a, a potion out of it or a tonic or a rub or whatever it is and use it for whatever it's required. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's in it's in her, it's, it's just who I am. Yeah. And actually connecting with, it's just, it's just normal. Yeah. And it, it doesn't, I mean, people say, does it scare you? And I, and I say to people, if it scares you, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. If you if it scares you, there's something very, very wrong going on. Because it's it's natural to me not to wear dark cloaks and looking for broomsticks. But yeah, and it's not about being a black witch or a white witch. I'm a I'm a person of the earth. Yeah, so true. I'm a connected to the earth and I've been here before and I've done this before. Whether you call me a witch or you've burnt me at the stake or whatever whatever the reason it is I've died. It just, I was here before, and we've done it before, and we've connected. And I know Mother Earth, and she knows me. Yeah. And that's as good as it gets. I mean, when you talk about mediumship, I mean, even two, three, four hundred years ago, we were talking to our ancestors' spirit, exactly. even then. I it's mean, just the modern, the modern spiritualism taking on that word, haven't they? Exactly. I mean, when I say to people, every tribe that has been on the face of the Earth has believed in some ancestry. Absolutely. Every, it doesn't matter if you're from, from the Incas, the Indians, the Red Indians, the Apache, it doesn't matter what, you can name every, yeah. from the Egyptians to um, even the Israelites, they always had gods. Yeah. They always had those that came before, whether it's um, the star seeds or it's an alien race, I don't care what you want to call it, we always knew there was something. But deep down within that, <clears throat> whether you want to talk all about the ancestors and gods, we always all knew how to connect with Earth first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mother Earth came yeah. first in my book because we all had to know what plant to eat, how to prepare it, how to strip it, what was good for us. Is it the outer branch? Is it the yeah. end? We had to do it by trial and error. Yeah. And we've had to learn it from day one alongside spirit because I do believe angels and spirit we're working alongside us and saying, try that one. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't lick that rock. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't lick that frog. Don't eat that. Yeah. Because obviously, people had to die along the way for yeah. the rest of the tribe to yeah. learn from. But I do believe that ev there's no tribe in this world that's ever been or to come that's never had spirit help. Yeah, and they always had each tribe or mm. each group would always have the, the oracle Suits, uh, the suits, even throwing the bones. Yeah. They would always have that person who went to yeah, within the, the tribe. Somebody had to be trusted with that one job yeah. of connecting. And obviously they used all the hallucinants, again, through herbs and yeah. things of that nature yeah. that would take them to that next level. And it's just, it's just a natural progression of Mother Earth, Father Sky coming together to blend. Mm. And all those who were living in between, acknowledging the both and keeping the balance so how do you yeah. think how do you think sort of that's sort of the ancient times spiritualism or mediumship has changed a lot hasn't it this, this past hundred years oh, do you God. think it's going to change even more yeah. why do you think it's heading in the future do you feel oh wow i think it's come it's come a long way from obviously the starts of because i think in the beginning the spirit or the angels worked alongside us 
Mm -hmm. And as our knowledge became better and we could learn to look after ourselves, then they took a step back and a step back and a step back. Yeah. But we've had to learn our pathway because I do believe we've had to come from God mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of the barrel and now we have to do the climb back up yeah. so to get yeah. back to God, get yeah. back to, to, yeah. to our knowledge. And so obviously on the way down, the angels had to teach us again, don't lick the rock or whatever. <laughs> but it, it, because otherwise, if we all died in the first year, It'd been crap red, wouldn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? We all had to survive it yeah. and get a few generations in for us to get that knowledge. Yeah. And after the first, I don't know, let's say, first thousand years or so, or a million years, then, then they could draw that energy off. Mm -hmm. And now we're on our own, sort of, and I say on our own, but obviously they stood well back at this point, watching us, knowing that we have this free will, and now we have to, we all lick the rock, yeah. you lick the rock. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But we have told you. And it's within you not to do it. Yeah. So, and again, so for, and for me now, we have to, all of us as mankind are now moving our way back to our God source. Yeah. And it's whether or not on the, on the path back, whether now we choose, because I do think it's split into two paths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a naughty path and a good path. I don't think there's an in-between path because we don't do in-between. Do you know what I mean? There's one or the other. Mm -hmm. And there's a black one and there's a white one. You want to pretend to be on the grey one, then crack them. Yeah. But for me, it's either you do it correctly, in which case you go to the right-hand side of God, or you stay on the left, which is Mother Earth, because that is the that is the Earth energy. Yeah. And when I say Earth energy, it's not a case of evil energy. It's the Earth that is of the lower, because it's the Earth energy. Yeah, yeah. Father, Sky, Mother Earth. And it's the Earth energy is what connected to the Earth. And I do believe that there is naughty spirit. And I know <clears throat> in the last hundred years... You've got Queen Victoria, who loved all of this and took she it into the parlours. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only reason now we are where we are. Yeah. Because otherwise it would still been in the back rooms of kitchens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And still being burnt on stakes and things. But to be fair, so he could quit the Queen said, oh, I fancy this. I have yeah. to say, right, let's get the table out and let's start walking the table around the room and, and doing everything else. That's, it's only because they made it fashionable. Yeah. And it's the posh people and the well-known people and the rich people who could afford to do it. That is the only reason it is what it is. Mm. It's the only reason it's a religion yeah. in my book because Conan Doyle, Victoria, made it a religion yeah. in order to give it some clout. Otherwise, I don't, it wouldn't have been. It'd still be in the back ages, yeah. in the back rooms, doing it in the kitchens like it was met up to 50 years ago even. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even down to my friend Margaret, who's now in the spirit, even then going to spiritualist church, you used to sneak there as soon as it went dark. You never told anybody because you went to church on a Sunday, yeah. spiritualist church on a Wednesday night. I know people who have gone, they will tell, they say, oh, we're going, whatever, we're going to bingo or something. Yeah, exactly. And they go every, even, and to be fair, up to the last 20 years, really. And I, I always remember going to church because I've only been in it about 20 odd years now. But that's my belief that the last 20 years or so, it's become more of a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's become more entertainment. Yeah. It's, it's look at those, and especially since they've put it on the TV, and yeah. you've got obviously Most Haunted and Derek Akora, and, and you've got all these lovely people, yeah. but they've made it into um, a little bit of a showtime. Yeah. It's no longer, if you want to call it your religion, because for me, I don't do religion as what everybody else does. But I do what's in me, in me heart. Yeah. If it's right, so it's right. True, so true. true. If it's yeah. right, I know what's right and I know what's wrong. Mm. And if I want to do it, I do it. And I have to answer to myself. Answer to my God later. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that for me is how it works. I think so, it's about being authentic in it. And, yeah. And just and, what, what I wanted to ask you really is, you know, we all have that point obviously your journey started very early mm. connecting with spirit and what you witnessed and and we are a lot of people tend to meet that one person or that one group they connect with that mm. was a great teacher to them or yeah. sort of really set them on was mm. there anybody is there any point you can sort of pinpoint or well, in that when it was like oh that person and it was a moment the most no, obvious. It was, no it was a moment it was yeah. but i was in the gap i went off and i joined the army as you know and I went to the Gulf and Northern Ireland and, and things. And by the time I came back from the Gulf, I knew I was ill. 
I was very ill because of all the injections and I had Gulf War Syndrome and that therefore gave me um, memory loss. Yeah. And I then went through the next 10 years of the 90s living with this memory loss and getting worse. My arthritis getting worse. I was on two sticks. So when Tim met me, my husband, I really, I was, even though I was still in the army, I was turning into a bit of a gibbering idiot. And it's mm. sad to say, but I have to say that about myself yeah. because that's how I felt it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I always knew I was going to be in this medium. Never done it, but in the 90s, I can't remember anything of the 90s. I got married, I had kids. Can't remember it all because it's gone. Yeah. Bit by bit, now it's starting to come back. But come 2000, yeah, just in December of 99, I've lost me a baby and I was in the right place. And I actually was so low. I mean, my Maisie was, I think she was nine months. My Rebecca was 18 months. I just lost my fifth baby. Or my third, we had five all together. We got two, there was three now to the spirit. And I just, it was this journey, just, I couldn't do anymore. And I knew I'd come to that point where I said, I, and I literally went upstairs and I just put all these tablets out and I thought, I can't keep doing this. I'm going to die either way. Mm. And I just sat there and all of a sudden, because I'd been having these chit chats with my great friend called Liz. She's been with me since I was about 10. And she's the one we got gathering herbs with and being yeah. witches with. And, and, she, <clears throat> and we'd sat there and she'd give me this book. And it was a man called Hal Huggins. And he was a dentist in America. And he had actually worked out that the amalgam fillings in your mouth was actually the catalyst to hold all the toxins in your body. And therefore, he assumed that if he could remove all of those, therefore, he could actually release the toxins. And then he started to cure people wow. with MS. A list, I mean, a list of stuff. But he actually worked for the American government, which you might have to take that bit out. But anyway, he worked for the American government. But, and they hated him. And they had um, a contract on him. And they'd sacked him from the government. Anyway, but he's wrote a couple of books. You can go on there, on the to Amazon, and look for his books, Al Loggins. And he's this famous dentist. And he writes about MS and all these other diseases by taking out all. And when he went to the government with it and said, you've got to get the silver fillings out, they told him to shut up. because wow. they were... So therefore, he wrote all these books. Anyway, he ended up having to go and live in cognito. Anyway, the point being is, my friend gave me this book. She said, read that. But I couldn't get past the first chapter because I couldn't remember what the bloody hell I'd read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that now. No, I wasn't. So every time I got to a certain point, I go, oh, yeah, that's me. But I couldn't remember the rest of it. But I, anyway, this is how it went all the way through the book. <clears throat> and then I got to this point where I had lined all these tablets up. And in the end, I just sat there and I just, and I just cried out. And I said, I need a cure. And you know, I know that someone's out there and you want me to do this. I said, then this man can fit, cure me. You get me his cure and I'll work for you. And I, I looked through the gauntlet. And I said, I'll give you three months. If not, I take all the tablets. And I'm going up. And at that, my dog walked in the bedroom with a white feather on his nose. And I stood there and I screamed at him, Is that it? Is that it? You have three months. And I scooped all these tablets up and I threw them away. Put them away. The dog walked out, obviously blowing the feather off his nose, thinking, well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> so, and I put it away. And, I, and then, we, anyway, we get to 2000. And I had to go to up here to, Man, um, to Blackpool, to Pontins, for a Gulf War seminar to find out how quick we're all dying, basically. And we had to take hair samples, spit samples, anything that would come out of your body, we samples, we samples, anything that would come out, yeah. they wanted a sample of it. They were going to send it all to Canada, come get tested to see how quick we're all dying. Anyway, they did all that to find out it all got sabotaged at the docks. Anyway, that's enough. You might have to take that bit out. But never mind. <laughs> moving forward. Keep going, go for it. <laughs> but moving forward. But at that time, we turned up. And on the Friday night, we went to the bar and I got absolutely blooded. And all these people were fussing around this girl. And I'm sat there going, what's, what's this girl? So I goes over to this girl, to the lady who was sat with me, and I said, who's she? She's never you mind, Jenna. 
of you, mate. Go over there. Well, that's enough. So, and I really wanted to know. So I went over blind drunk, and, and it's this American lady, and I'm going, oh, you, 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 you. What, what are you doing? So she's looking at me, and all these people are going, get the drunk off her. Do you know what I mean? Get the drunken woman. <laughs> <laughs> and she turns around, she says, you're very drunk. Come and speak to me in the morning. But my dad thinks he can cure people. I went, right, that'll do, mate. So I went back to my hotel room in Pontins. Anyway, we went back there, 7 o'clock the next morning. I'm wide awake, I'm sober, and I'm falling out of bed. Said to my husband, look after the kids, I'll speak to you in a bit, I'm off. Gets me two sticks, I'm off, and I'm sat in the seminar room waiting for her to turn up. And she turns up and looks at me as if to say, God, there's that drunk just sobering up. <clears throat> and she's setting up this table, and I walked over, I says, do you want to tell me now what you're doing there? And she looks at me, she says, are you not drunk? Oh, I'm as sober as it comes, love, tell me what. And she told me, my dad's called Hal Huggins. Wow. <laughs> He's come to England to look for six volunteers. He thinks he can cure you. I said, I've got his book at home. I said, I'm not, I'm at, so, every time I get so far, I said, I can't read the rest. I said, because I keep forgetting it. She says, fill that then. And as I filled it all, then my husband came in with the kids and we we're having this really good chit chat with this later. And she turns around to me and she said, in a month, we'll let you know. And I turned around to my husband, and this was the first time I'd ever given a message out. And I turned around to my team, and I went, in one month, on a Friday night, at quarter past seven, that lady's going to ring, and we're going to America. And one month later, Les Dennis was on the teller, family fortunes, the adverts came on, the phone rang, she wants to come to America. Wow. Incredible. And off I went. And that was in, and I went in the May. So right now, I'd be prepping in 2000 to go to America. And in May I went and I was there for a fortnight and they did every test. They did, um, they took me for a brain scan, which I'll tell you about because actually it could measure clairvoyance. Yeah. Wow, right? Yeah. They took spit samples, air samples, urine, bloods. They put us on bone monitors. They um, did bone density. They did everything. They, uh, they, they got everything out there. And then the whole thing was, each of us every day had to go one a day, <clears throat> where there were six um, war vets, and they were going to go in and remove all our silver fillings and your teeth, if need be. But if, that, if that's the case, and I just said, do what you've got to do. Yeah. I knew. And on the way there, I, all, all I knew was either if I die on the bed, I die, and I come home cured. I knew it, one way yeah, or the other. Yeah. Anyway, you know, for all these days, and then in between time, they were training us what to eat, what not to eat, what's what's causing it all, and the etymology of the whole Gulf War thing and silver fillings. We knew everything about the poisonage of it and everything. I then it was my turn to go and get my teeth done. So, and then the night before, my husband gave me this vitamin C because they were building us up with all these vitamins. And they said to him, don't give him the vitamin C, but he, he forgot and give it me. So the next morning, I had to have all the injections from my mouth. And they all came walking in with all these big space suits on. All these machines around my head, because obviously this is mercury. It's mercury poison, isn't it? Yeah. And there are, there are all these machines in my mouth, my mouth is wide open. And for 12 hours, I lay in that chair. And you know what? It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Never got out the, didn't go for a wee, didn't want to rest. They just said, let us work. Yeah. And they started at the back of my mouth. And every time they took a filling out, it went, Poof. it was like a release of energy. I could have, even now, do you remember the quantum leap? Oh, yeah. It was like I was sat in the back room waiting for him to do me bit. Yeah. Wow. Honestly. And Jenny's just going to sit in that, that room over there waiting for this to be done. And all my teeth just gone. All this release of energy, and then after 12 hours and 33 injections later in my mouth just to keep it numb, and a heart doctor watching because they had me wired up to him. Honestly, if you've seen it, it was like something out of sci fi. And they did all of that, and then at the end of the day, I went home, they threw me in my bed. The next morning, I got up, it's the first time I woke without sticks. Wow, incredible! 
honestly. And then I knew from that moment on, and they said, and they still carried on training us, and we only had two weeks there. But just before I went for the, my, my mouth, which is the, this is the bit I want to tell you, they took us to see this fella who worked for NASA. Because obviously when you work for the government, you, you know everybody. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So we actually got all these favours being paid back from all these doctors he'd helped. You know, NASA people. and uh, Anyway, very, very clever people. Anyway, there's this chap who worked for NASA. You might have to edit that out. And this fella said, I can tell you what you're going to be good at. I can tell you your job. I can tell you whether or not you're better than your job, what you're willing to learn, how good your brain is. I can tell you how much sleep you take. Anyway, he puts like what you see in the films, puts one of them funny hats on with all these wires. Yeah. Sits there, and then he says, just do as I tell you. He didn't ask you any questions, apart from like, are you all right? And all that stuff. <laughs> but he's got his computer there, and he's mapping your brainwaves. So as he's asking you certain questions, he's watching the brainwaves. And just bef the day before, I'd gone for um, a spinal tap so they could get some spinal fluid. That's how much fluids they want out of your body. So um, because I was in agony and I had this splitting headache because they couldn't get any, because they couldn't bend me enough because of my arthritis, it caused such a, a massive headache. I was crying in pain. And this chap, and I'm sat there and I'm going, oh, God, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right, just keep going. And in the end, he said to me, is your headache that bad? I said, yeah. He said, right, he says, I, I can hardly measure anything in your brain. He said, I've hardly got any brainwaves. Well, my husband thought that was hilarious. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. But he'd obviously measured what he needed. And then I'd gone the next day to have all my teeth ripped out and everything else. And then the next day after that, they took me back to see this man because they wanted all before and after. Mm. And the, the day before when he said to me, where is what you think is in your head? And I said, it's there. The white fog. I said, is there in my head? And this man went, there it is. And he pointed to my head on his screen and he said, there is the white fog. There. That's how good this fellow was. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was fabulous. Yeah. And then the day after I went back, that had actually shrunk by a quarter. When the time I'd run my teeth out. Wow. And that had shrunk by a quarter. And he said, it's going to take its time. And then he did all the tests again. He said, you've got no um, headache today. So I've got all these tests. You know what I mean? So he did it all over again. Yeah, yeah. Then he could compare the two. And then by the end of the week, or the two weeks, they came out with all your all your results. Do you know what I mean? Oh, Jenny, you've had this, this, and this. Your kidneys are knackered. Your liver's knackered. Um, really, you're not going to get to 40. I was 33, 34. You're not going to get to 40. Basically, your kidney's going to die. And you're this not is gonna, what they said to you? Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get to, um, by the time you're 40, really, I won't really worry about it because your brain will be dead before then. Yeah. That's how bad things were. I'm sat, and we're all sat there thinking, I've just come 12,000 miles, mate. Do you know what I mean? Make it sound a bit better. <laughs> 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 but to be fair, he was, he was speaking the truth because that's what the results, that's what you came yeah. with. Yeah. Now all these, and then obviously they did all the bloods beforehand and then they did everything again afterwards to colorate them. And then this, and then he sits there and he says, and these are all your bloods afterwards. He says, and we now know we've got a good way forward. So he was like, right, you know, that's all right. Phew, we're going home, yeah. you know. And then this NASA fella turns up and he went through everybody. And he said, oh, and you could be an airline pilot and you like this and you like that and this is your favourite food. And all. Off a brain scan. Are you sure? You remain, seriously. Yeah, yeah. But he, I'll tell you what, he was good. And he did everybody, and everyone's going, look at me, I'm going to be an airline pilot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm flying to space. And I'm sat there, and my husband's sat there going, oh, no. <laughs> 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 And then he gets to me, he says, and this lady, he says, interests me the most, because when she came, her head was really banging with this headache. He says, and I couldn't even measure. And I really thought we were going to have real problems. He says, and then she comes back, and then he turns to me, he says, have you ever, ever heard about these silly people? He said, you know, the ones who think they can talk to dead people. <laughs> and I went, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously I've known it all my life. And he's, I went, yeah. He says, in my job, he says, my duty is to make sure that everyone who goes to space 
is mentally good enough. Yeah. He said, but I've tried, I've had to use it on everybody in walk of life to make sure that the, the, the equipment works. Yeah. So he says, and I've had the privilege, he says, of working out everybody's jobs. He says, and I have all these people who come to me and telling me that they're mediums. He says, and the brainwaves don't tell me it. He says, and yeah, I've done it on about three or four. He says, that ah. He says, and you're one of them. Wow. And I looked at him and I went, I could feel myself going, coaching. <laughs> <laughs> what were and, the others looking like at this point? No, I'm going, <laughs> he says, do you like first aid? He says, and medical stuff. And I said, I'm going to go back. I said, I'm going to go to college. I said, I want to go and learn how to look after myself. He said, go and do it. He said, because you have the brain waves. He says, that I can only, he said, I have to do this on doctors. He says, and doctors who have to do lung surgery, like brain surgeons. Check me out. <laughs> just check it out now. Do you know what I mean? Not just a man of genius. <laughs> but, say it, but he said, because these people have to go really deep within their mind. He says, and the alpha waves and the delta waves have got to really go too, that deep that you're going into the theta waves yeah. where yeah. you have to see it for yourself and you can, and he said, and I couldn't measure them on you. He says, and even when you came back, he says, I could hardly measure them on you. Even then, when you had a good brain, it's because they were that low. He says, and I'm telling you now, he says, if you chose to be a medium, he says, go and have to give it a go. He says, I'll tell you now, he says, you'll be good at it. Wow, that's incredible. Well, I sat there going, ah, oh. <laughs> to me, be, he's going, oh. I just say, what have you told her that for? Because yeah. my life will never be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> and we came home, really sort of walking and speaking and not slavering. Like, and then when I say that, people go, oh, I'm thinking I'm being funny, but I'm yeah. not. I'm talking, I've got dementia in my 30s. I'm telling you, it's a real thing. I'm slaver. I can't walk straight. I can't stand up straight. Now I'm walking. I'm picking my own babies up. I can remember now what I've just done with their dinner. It's it's not in the fridge. Do you know what I mean? Or it's not in the oven or yeah. wherever it is. I've not wow. hid it. That's what I'm talking about. And bit by it's took me 20 years to get this right. This has not come overnight, and I've known it's been a fight every day. Chronic fatigue, fibro, aches and pains and, and PTSD and heart palpitations and memory loss i've had all of that but you know what every day on all all i did when i got back was say i need to learn to heal so i signed up to college i went and i passed aromatherapy reflexology i got about 10 different things under my belt i've gone and done a degree in holistic medicine and then in the meantime i went back to and this is when my friend came in liz and said I found that church up the road, should we go? I pound the kids off with my mum and off we went. And I went to the, the door of the spiritualist church. This lady came out and I said, I've been sent. And I don't know why. I said, but I do. And she went, in you go. Wow. <laughs> and that was it. And then within a year, I'm sat in the development circle and the doors opened and it went back. Incredible. And I love the way when you've gone over there, really, to get get it's coincided the health side mm. with your divine purpose yeah. coming in honestly like, I've, like everything just, just bang, bang. honestly and it just and that's why every day um, I know when I say to people you can get better yeah I know it because I've had my miracle when I say there's miracles I know there is because I've had one yeah. not many people can say that but I know I've had mine and I'm so fortunate yeah because I know there's many of my friends with Gulf War who can't fight for themselves. And so, and so many have took their own line. And it, it's so hard. It's, it's just so heartbreaking. Yeah. And yet, <clears throat> I refuse to sit back mm. and just pretend it's not going to happen. I yeah. get out there, I do it because I know there's, a, there's an end result. Yeah. And when I, every time I stand up, I do better than I did yesterday. It's not, I don't give a toss what any other medium's doing. Yeah. Right. I don't give a toss. Unless they're really crap, of course, and then I will have to say my piece. But, and if they're a charlatan, I will have to say my piece. But the yeah. point being is, my competition is with me. Because every day I have to prove that I'm getting better. Yeah. And the older I'm getting, the better I'm getting. That, how many people can say that? <laughs> Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Not many. And now mentally, I'm in a sharper place now than I was last year, than I was the year before. And every year now he's getting, because every January, February, I hardly do any work. 
because I can't focus. And every year now it's getting a little lighter and lighter. Where now I'm, I'm, I go to work earlier and earlier. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm getting better. So and that's my. So where do you think that sort of coming back? You know, the, the, I always say that some people have got stronger links than others. So where do you think that comes from? Does that come from your development, your divine purpose? And what's your thoughts on that? So when you got a group of students, and sometimes we found as well, we that sometimes you're not meant to be a medium. You've not got that gift, or maybe mm, yeah. you're meant to do mediumship, or mm. maybe you're meant to do healing, or maybe you're meant to do some other kind of work. <laughs> yeah. So is that, do they need to do more inner work on themselves? Where does that link come from? Should it be natural? What's I think thoughts? it's a bit of, but I think they've got to acknowledge themselves. Aren't they? They've got to do the shadow work. They've got to know, they've got to know their, their lineage, as in <clears throat> whether it's past lives. For me, they've got to know who they are. Yeah. And if they don't know who they are, you can pretend to be the medium all you like. You yeah. can pretend to be the greatest dealer going. But if there is nothing coming from that and you're not you're still in the same place, nothing's happening. Yeah. For me, you've got to know my I know my journey. And I know from being three year old, it might have been younger, but from about three or four, that is when I started to acknowledge yeah. it. Does that make sense or remember it? But I can now remember being three. Yeah. I couldn't remember what happened this morning many years ago. I couldn't have happened what happened to my whether I fed my kids that day. But the bit by bit, I had to write everything down. I had to remember to write everything down to look at the book. <laughs> Honestly, if you'd see the, some of the stuff I've done, which have been ridiculous, do you know what I mean? But I've had to do it in order to, to get through it. But I also do say to people that you've got to know your journey. It's not, it's not good enough to turn around and say, well, today I'm going to be a medium. It ain't good enough. Yeah. You've got to know who you are because spirit will expect you to know who you are. Yeah. Spirit will, to find that authenticity, you've got to know who you are as a person. Yeah. You can't just be, decide today's the day, I'm going to be the medium. Because we may have been a swine for the last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I mean... So I, true, yeah. You've got to look at it a bit. Yeah. You know, we, we all know that we've got people around us who are in the spiritual community who you'd think, how do you call yourself a spiritual person? When in theory, you're the most awful going. Our spirit's still working with these people. Yeah. Mm. If that's who they're working with. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's our, for me, is to get to know who you are and to deal with it every day. You can't just say, let's hide that one. Let's put that to bed. Do you think a bit of its perspective as well? Because as you were talking about your story, mm. I mean, that is, it's, it's, you know, you've been through a lot. Yeah. And it'd be so easy to express that in a very different way. Of course it is. And the way you give it, it's almost like what it's taught you, what it's shown mm. you about. That's so important, that. I, yeah. Not I mean, everyone can look at it that way. No, I mean, I, when I was that. in that and I was going through all of that, and I was a big drinker. I was in the army. I was a big drinker. I could drink anybody under the table. Yeah. I'd, I'd fight, believe it or not, I could argue with people. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> <don't they>? no, <laughs> but, you know, but the point is, I, I could do all that. I, and I could have carried on, and I could have said to my husband, oh, no, I'm not going to Austria, um, America. I'm not having that treatment. I'm not going all that way. Yeah. Or even the ones that did come with me. I've still gone back to the drinking. Yeah. So they've, they've gone. They've Good got that. So like you said, yeah. choice. And, it's tr and I came back, and I said, I've got to get myself better. And I couldn't think of anything else in me, in me that said, you can't do this, because I knew I could. Every, all the other six of them gone back to what they was. And they're all now still struggling mm. because they didn't take that chance. That one chance in life was given to them. I took it and ran with it. That opportunity is not always given ev all the time. <clears throat> and exactly. And I've never been given enough. I say I've never been given not one as bright as that. I knew this was the only chance I was going to get to it, a miracle. Yeah. And I was going to take it regardless of what was happening. And I took it and I ran with it. Out of all of us, I think I'm the only one left who's really looking up, still using and still can breathe and, and think under my own, my own skin. Do you know what I mean? Without having yeah. somebody prompt me. I mean, I still get the odd prompting. Do you know what I mean? I still forget the odd things, but I'm never going to be free of it neither. Yeah. But as long as I can still live better than what everyone else is doing. You can't get rid of that part of you. That's who you are. Well, no, I mean, I mean like the toxins, yeah. even though the toxins right. are bleaching out of me every day, as long as I've got a less than what happened yesterday. Yeah. 
today's going to be a better day. That's how I see it. If every day, and that's why when I get up on the rostrum, it's not about, look at Jenny's, isn't she, God, whatever. It's because every day I work at it. Every day. There's not a day where I don't think of, right, what could I have done better last night? What should I do tonight? Mm. Every day is a learning day. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I mean, we've been very lucky. We've always had each other, me and Stephen, mm. all on our journey. We, we're, yeah. we're truthful with each other. Mm. And, and it's good. To and that's be, what you need, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good to be truthful with yourself. Mm. And, and you don't need anybody to tell you if you've had a, a really good night mm. or it's not been quite on. Yeah. Like, you know. Exactly. Time. And you know, you know. And then you I mean, I'm, obviously, you know, Margaret and Mandy come everywhere with me. But if I get in the car after the service, I'll go, oh, God, that was awful, wasn't it? And they'll, they'll say to me, well, what was you watching? Yeah. <laughs> or they'll go, oh, weren't your best, was it? Yeah. But, of course, then you've got to start factoring in. Obviously, you're a female with hormones, and obviously when all that was going on, you could see, see the difference in your performance. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So all of that, but there's a lot more to it than just that. But every day you get up and you think, right, did I give that one message right? I could nag all that all the way on. And yeah. still sit up and think, right, well... Ooh, the way I got up there was a bit, a bit too much. I should have pulled back there. I should have done, and that's me learning my my craft. Yeah, it's not spirit learning theirs because they know theirs. Mm. The spirit have just got to tell Jenny when to be quiet and when to, to open their mouth up. Yeah, and that's where I've got to learn me and them together. Yeah. So, so part it's, of it is you're a team, aren't you? Of course, you're it a is. Team with spirit, and I think sometimes people can put spirit. We don't work for spirit. We work we're with, with spirit. We work together. And they put uh, spirit up here. Yeah. And you were a team. We work. We have to do our fifty percent. Thank you. So not just oh, turn thank up you and that. spirit to be there. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the teachings are trying to be brought back now. That you know preparation, energy. I mean, yeah. how important is it oh, when you God. when 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 you walk in somewhere? Do you are you quite sensitive if, if mm. the place is not prepared yeah. right and stuff? Are you quite I mean, for me, I mean, I I used to. Obviously, I don't do the churches as much anymore. I mean, I was doing like 110 churches. But do you know what? I, I, I went to a few churches where I was just, uh, which I thought was nice because I would walk in, obviously, when I was smoking, I used to stand outside the church, have a fag. And one or two places used to say to me, We knew you were there, Jenna, because your energy came in before you did. That is when you know. We're in a good place. Yeah, yeah. When your energy, you're outside having a fag and your energy, not because anyone's got any under mediums here. Yeah. When your energy has walked in and announced itself. And I go, you're, just because I feel I find that then, even though I'm dead loud and brass, actually, I'm quite shy some days. You know what I mean? And I think, oh, God, did it really? But, and then there's other days you walk in and you go, oh, you want to bet, you want to bet my energy's coming in and knocked you out. Because what's going on in here? Yeah, there's them days where my energy's gone in and gone. Oh, we've just actually it's into something, yeah. which is not good. So you better protect yourself. And I can't understand where this learning has come. Where all these up and coming and and mediums are talking about not doing protection. Yeah, giving permission to every Sunday canary so, from the spirit so realm. So just, honestly, it's definitely. this is my as you know we've talked about this many times. Yeah, it's my bugbear where you know people in in a, in a in a group in a open circle they're giving permission to unknown forces. You know, you're just coming off the streets. You're sitting in your first open circle, and you're being expected to give your permission to work with somebody. Isn't that right? Yeah. And I say to people, when, I, when I'm in my classes, like now, I don't care. I mean, I do an online class now, and I've just started. It's about six weeks in. And I've said to everybody, don't expect to work with spirit yet, because we ain't doing it. Until we know that I know deep in my heart so that you can protect yourselves. I said, I don't care where you've come from, whether you're mediums or whether you're not, you better be prepared to throw out all you know. And I'm, I'm just getting to the point now, I don't know if it's because I'm getting old or what, but I'm getting to the point where I'm speaking and just saying it as it were, tiptoeing round people, it's doesn't hurt. Oh, it. yeah. Tiptoeing and doing important. the spiritual thing. You know, for years, it was a case of, be spiritual, Jennifer. Yeah. Shut your mouth, Jennifer, be spiritual. But, but you can be spiritual, but truth at the same time. And I, I used to always hold back, and yeah. to be fair, I did. Because I never said, oh, what I wanted to say, because if that was the case, I would never got another service anyway. 
<coughs> but over the years now, I'm quite happy to say to people, that's wrong. Yeah. And I'm quite happy to say to another medium, who are you working with? Because I can see it. Just because I can see it doesn't, but yet when you actually question other people and say, they go, oh yeah, I had a feeling, but I didn't know what. Because yeah. the knowledge isn't there. Yeah. Because even though we've come all this long way, like the first question you asked was, where was it all come? We're actually not come any further. Yeah. When you see it, we've come this far and we've got to a point where, so dare I say, the SNU used to teach people how to go out and do clearances. Yeah. Now, apparently, the new pre um, president doesn't believe there's any notice. Yeah, I know that, yeah. So, therefore, if she doesn't believe there's any notice, what were they doing teaching all these other mediums to go out there and do rescues in the first place? So where did the flip over come where we've gone from no accepting that there is a naughty generation or there's a naughty side to spirit, well, spirit to all of a sudden there is none? Where's the flip come? Because I've, 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 I've be missed someone. I mean, we were quite fortunate because we came into this work through mm. a home circle. See, I'm, I'm great teachings. Mm. And we, when we sort of moved into the churches and travelling around, and we were quite stunned when people would come out with, well, everything's like, I don't worry about that. And we were like, as on the back of our heads, you know, to stand yeah. up and go, well, I know different. When you've got 50 year mediums, 50 yeah. year mediums telling you, yeah. there is no darkness. You, oh, you, but you read some of the old, the old teachings. Have you been there? I remember, I remember you saying, sorry 100. to interrupt, but I remember you saying to me, Jenny, it was a, I can picture it in the garden, and you said, anybody that comes up to you and says there is no dark, walk away from them, they don't know what they're talking yeah. about. And I, my, my lady, you know, to the spirit, Margaret, she always said that to me. She said, do you know what? And she'd been, obviously, in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, you know what I mean? When the last 50, 60 years, and she passed in, 2007 so more or less she was 80 odd then so from being a 10 year old she was sort of drawn into it mm -hmm. you know what i mean so and she always said you know jenny she said yes and you that it was the males who were the rescuers females weren't allowed to do it because they were deemed weak so <laughs> oh not but then, then, then but then again we're going back from the victorian yes we're going back up. we're going from the victorian age but we know in many tribes before, the women were always deemed as the wise women. Sure. So, but obviously, as the 17th century and the 18th, obviously women Western had to, culture yeah, women had to take a back step and just pretend that we weren't there. And a lot of that is just <coughs> repressed as well. Yeah, and it has to be because men need to feel sorry, lads. You feel like you need to be in there somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Got the cameras on. Yeah. <laughs> You feel like you need to be there. Well, seriously, but well, it's only from the Victorians where women was put in their place yeah. and being told to sort of sit in the scullery. Mm. But women are not allowed to be, they're not learned enough. They're not, um, they don't have the knowledge. But really, for the millions of years before, women always ran the tribes. Yeah. They were the integral part. And, and, and they held it the together. Tribe. Absolutely. And, you know, and it was always the wise woman. It's only the old one when you say go to the wise man. It was always go and see the, the old crone, go and see the white, you know what I mean, the yeah, wise woman. 100%. So really, and now, so anyway, so apparently the SNU always put it into a man's hands because they were stronger and they weren't hormonal and, you know, all these crazy women just running around. Now, so where did the flip come? Where we've gone from doing that and knowing that we can't go out and do rescues to, and then when Margaret said it to me, she said, but do you know what, Janice, because of your strength of being in the army, she says, Spirit will use you. And I always knew they would. Yeah. I always knew I was going to go out there and be a warrior for the naughty size. And it's not something that everybody knows about me that I do. Spirit bring the right jobs, as I say it. And I go out and I do the, the clearances. We go home. We don't have to tell everybody about it. We're done. We're dusted. We do the job. We come home. Yeah. Tea and biscuits and medals later. Do you know what I mean? And that's how we do it. Yeah. And if there's, a, if there's a chippy on the way home, all the better. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, that's how, that's how we yeah. do it. Where did the flip come? Where now? There isn't. Is it because we're in the day and age where the satanics are, are ruining the place? Yeah. Something's gone drastically wrong. Well, the where the infiltrated. Yeah, thank, I was just going to say, where the noughties have stepped in and took yeah. over yeah. to ignore us. Pretend we're not here. 
How can you pretend the big elephant in the room is not really there? Well, the lady who brought us into this work that was, in a way, our sort of guru and eater, and she, she felt um, at one time she said something's not right in the system of things it has been infiltrated. Yes, I've said and, it for 20 and, years. And it's interesting because as you were talking there about the females that all the circles I know of and I've read of have been run by, by, by females. females. And every, every rescuer I know... Is a female. Yeah. She just so, I, mean, I know you used to do bits, don't you? Yeah. And and there's odds there is men obviously, and not to put your all down. There are <laughs> <laughs> you do well, do your jobs. Some yeah, somewhere in the in the background, <laughs> hoying it all up. But, but seriously, there are men out there, but the point being is we never really no one ever talks about the women like you say, holding the circle together, holding yeah. the energy. Well, because obviously a lot of the times the men, I keep saying men, I don't, you understand it in yeah, the way I'm saying it, because yeah, we yeah. know that there's men out there that love to turn up to a church, wearing a fancy suit, smelling a good cologne, and as one president said to me, because it's eye candy for the congregation. Yeah. Mm, mm. I have an issue with that. And then she says, but you know what, Jenny, when you turn up, you get what you say is on the can. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But the, that's where I have an issue with that. It, Not because I'm, I'm any different. Stepping away from authenticity. Isn't exactly. It? And for me, if someone needs help, we go and help them. We don't have to shout our gobs off. We just go and we do our job. We come home. And it's this energy of knowing what is correct, what isn't. Who we're working with, who we're not. Who you're protecting against and who you who expects you to protect. Spirit, expect me to put my protection up. My guys don't ever say to me, it's us, don't bother. Absolutely. <laughs> they never once walk in and say never to me. Never become complacent, never. Never. My, if mine don't put my protection up, my John will go, sorry, something wrong. Personal responsibility. He's dead, he's dead sarcastic. I've had it more the other way, but Spirit will say, after. we did tell you. Oh, well, that, that one. We did tell you, it's that, a daily that, practice. Yes, and, and my John will walk in and so if I... If I I did a reading oh, a couple of months back, and I don't know, one of those moments, I haven't got a clue. And halfway through the reading, I went, because <gasps> it, it weren't sounding like me. It, didn't, it wasn't running right. Yeah. And I just went, and they just it's almost it's like the spirit just stood behind me and sort of replayed the five minutes or ten minutes beforehand. And they went, yeah, you didn't open up, did you? Mm. And I could feel the, the, and I'm going, oh, please God, please God, well, what's going on? What's, and I was panicking because I knew I hadn't done yeah. the one thing that I'd done for the last 20 years. One day I hadn't done it. And the reading wasn't correct. Do you know what I mean? So, and I just drew everything back and I just said to this woman, just give me a minute. Went outside and I thought, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just open up. I stood outside, I opened up and I could feel my John, he stood there going, he is dead sarcastic. That's why I love him. I think that's where I get me a little bit of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> and he just stood there going, We opened up, we did our business, we went back in, cracked on, job done. So, when do you think you're talking about sort of light and, and, and the shadow or light and the less than light? When was your first sort of experience where you've experienced that about light and dark? We, I used to run um, a little sensor, you know, Whispering Angels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we first opened it, we were at 2003. Um, well, actually, we felt it in the church. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the animosity. And they're not very nice people. And they don't like the fact that anyone's better than them or they think someone's better than them. So trying to bring people down, really, you sort of yeah. start to see it. And then it was actually in there where when I said to my guru at the time, who was teaching me, lovely Barbara, she's to the spirit now, but she was a dead straightforward lady, a spade, a spade. And if she couldn't hear you right in the church, she would stop the service, Janet, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, God love her. She was lovely, but she said it as it was. They're a good sort, that type yeah. of people. They're the, they're the good and those ones. are the ones of the essence of the church. 100%. And, but actually in the church at the time, when she gave up, somebody else took over. And there was some change then. And there was people starting to, where Barbara wouldn't have put, have put up with them. She used to throw all these type of people out. Well, all of a sudden, we was being infiltrated by all these so called rescuers who went into graveyards looking for people to rescue. 
Really? Yeah. Wow. And, this, and, you know, and then they all went going to this person's house and they all did like this rescue circle where they would drive. Oh, it was, it was quite heavy. And then they said to me one night, would you want to come? And obviously being like a bit gullible because obviously the first couple of years in church, you're a bit daft, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, okay then. I'll come. And I said to my husband, will you take me to Bolton? To this fella's house because they're all in this rescue circle and and he went, what's that about? I said, well, it's all like evil spirits and stuff. I said, we're going to go rescue him, man. Like you do. <laughs> anyway, my husband took me. <laughs> and he's, he's, he only sat outside his house and I went, he's somewhere on here. And he just looked at me and went, do you know what, Jan? He says, you're learning all of this. He says, and I've got some bloke behind me saying, if she goes in there, she's going to open up to all sorts. And I looked at him and I went, you what? You what? Oh no, they're all spiritual people, Tim. Again, being blinded by yeah, yeah. they're all spiritual people. No, you won't do that. It's, it's a church. It's a church, it's only mental. He said, That's what I'm being told. You go in there, you're going to open up to so something else. He says, So take your choice. I said, Drive me home. And he drove me home. Do you know what I mean? And, and the next day, they went, Where was you? I went, I mm, couldn't find you. And I just, and there was something then, and I thought, no, I need to learn this. I knew then I was being told, you need to learn because you're yeah. too gullible. You're going to walk straight into it. And this is why a lot of lovely mediums with good intentions end up with issues because they're too gullible. Yeah. And it is the gullible. Is I'm sorry because I've done it. Yeah. And I bet you that. Oh, we've all been there. Right. Yeah. The it's not because you're a genius. I know all this. It's because we've, we've done the, we've done the following we've over. We've experienced it. Experiences yeah. and, and, and it's things that not everything that glitters is gold. Thank you. Saying. Exactly. You can always polish her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember when I was sort of starting out in a way and I'd sit and I went along with Stephen to do some group readings and I'd sit there and just observe and this lovely lady come in and she's like, she looked like somebody's granny. Yeah. I love it. And she sat there and I thought, oh, I feel sick. I feel sick to my stomach. Oh, and Stephen's giving me, and everything's being blocked. No, no, no. And I thought, hmm, that's unusual. Everything's flowing normally. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it all concluded. And I said, I've got to tell you, I feel so sick. And it was a huge lesson because on the face, oh, what a lovely lady, didn't it? Exactly. And no energy. You're working with energy. It's something mm -hmm. not right here. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's your energy centre that's yeah. telling you something. Mm -hmm. And that was a big lesson. And, and that's your right intuition, isn't it? That is yeah. your intuition yeah. kicking in and saying something really not right. Stop. Stop. Yeah. And that is where, and that is where these lessons need to come in. I mean, we've all done it. We've all been that gullible fool, and we've all done it because we we're all starry eyed, and we think it's all spirit. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And and then when my guide says to me, I mean, I, I remember we had a couple of months off or whatever, and I was stood outside my back door having a fag, and I was thinking, oh my god, I've got to go do this service later on. And I'm going on that at it. I'm going, oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. What if I get there? It's all rubbish and it's all crap and all the rest of it. And oh, yeah, yeah, it's talking to myself. Yeah. And sends it. And all of a sudden, my guy, my John, comes in. He went, Why are you going on your own? I said, Do you want? He said, Are you going on your own? I went, Well, no, I'm hoping you come with me. He says, Well, it's not you who's doing the service then, is it? He said, So all we need you for is to open your mouth. He said, So I would stop that right now. Yeah. Goodbye. I'll see you when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that is our word. So when he comes in, he just says to me, Really? Mm -hmm. Do you want to just have a look at that? Or when I was actually again invited to go and do a naughty session. Again, being gullible. You know? Yeah. Oh, somebody's got a demon down the road. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come? <laughs> Do you know what? And I, I, I'm always the first one. Is there a scrap? Let's, let's go. And anyway, there was this well known remover of naughty ones. And I'd actually, Spirit said to me, you need to get him. I went, oh, no, it's all right, I'll go. They went, no, you're not going. You have nothing to do. And actually, I, I cried. Anyway, I rung this, passed the message on, which was got to this fella. Anyway, it was all sorted. And they came down, they did it. They were in there about seven hours. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was a really naughty one. And there was a gang of them. Anyway, I was outside the house going, shall I just knock on the door and offer me help? <laughs> Because I wanted to get in there. That's how silly I've been. Yeah. 
when Spirit have said to me, do not go near them. So why do you think there was Spirit were telling you? Because you weren't experienced enough? No, or? because I weren't experienced enough. And there was a connection because the girl was ex-army and what she had with her was ex- and it was through the ex-army connection. Wow. As, as soon as I went in and opened myself up, he'd have attached himself to me and I'd have brought him home with me and she'd have been all nice and clear. Yeah. And Spirit just went to me, stop. So I, these, I'm, I'm talking about massive lessons where they've actually just stopped me in my tracks and said, mm. walk in by your own, but go by your own. Go by yourself. If, I, if you take that, go in by yourself. We'll see you later. I think it's a sharp reminder as well when you're talking about your job is that Spirit had to remind me many times, said, you're not on your own. Yeah. And you isolate yourself. Yeah. You think it's all me. And me, me, me. And coming in and you doubt. Yeah. Which sometimes the lesson like Spirit's can try to give you that. And that exactly. And actually Spirit said, you're not on your own. We're together. Yeah. And, that, and then that go, oh, yeah, we are Going together. Going into the mind stuff, mm-hmm. isn't it? Going into I mean, the mind. When, that, when I say to people, you know, never once has my John walked in and said to me, God, you were blinded last night. Oh, well done. Or walked out of a church and he's gone, oh, God, yeah. you were outstanding tonight. He's never once patted me on the back and went, well done, you listened to everything tonight. He's never once done it. He's finished the service. I say, thank you, good night. People come up to me and say, oh, Jenny, that was blinded and whatever. I say, well, spirit will be placed. Thank you. We walk out the church. It's my grandma then, they've already gone. They don't stand at the door. Spirit don't stand at the door, clapping me out, yeah. going, oh, oh, you were marvellous tonight. Yeah. They don't, they've already gone. I say yeah. gone, but they've already took a step back. Yeah. My grandma is the one to shut the door. And she goes, right, everybody, spirit-wise, out. Shut the doors. I'll speak to you later. But if she says that, I know I've done something wrong. <laughs> yeah. Something didn't go quite yeah. right. Otherwise, it's good night. Done. That's it. We're done. Yeah. See you tomorrow. And that's good enough. That's what, that, it, it'll yeah. always be the good minute I say to a lot of people, the minute spirits say to you, "Well done, we could do better tomorrow," I said, "That's when you have to start asking questions. Mm, Who are you working with?" So you know, when we're talking about protection, Jenny, mm. it's a really good opportunity. You know, doing, mm. doing these podcasts, trying to get yes. that knowledge out there. What Massive. advice would you give to whether it's up and coming, you know, spirit works mediums? Anybody like that about protection techniques and, and, and... Go back to basics. I've just started, obviously, again, my class online. Um, it's called iMedium. So if anybody wants to join it, by all means, you've just got to join the page. Yeah. It's a closed group. It's on a Sunday night. We've started from the basics. And like I've said to everybody in the group, I don't care who you are, what the pathway you've got. We're at, I'm an established medium. I'm quite happy to go back to basics. Not because I'm teaching it, Absolutely because it actually reminds me yeah, it of where I've come from. Yeah. And it reminds me of where I'm heading. And it keeps me back in line again. And every time I, I think I, I'm starting to drift, I think spirit just say, right, let's do it. Let's start again, Jennifer. And I'm quite happy for that because it brings me back. And the first week we did learn about your intuition. Because it's about the difference, about what this energy, to me, the lower three is all about the stabilizing factors mm-hmm. of who you are as a person. So once we get these cracked, we, we can move forward. Foundation, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why I say to everybody, the first lower three energies, if we don't, we can, we don't understand them, why am I going to let you open up to spirit to so what you don't know? If you don't know you, why should we trust you so with spirit? Because these are beautiful people. Why would I expect them to come all this way with love and light and step into this horrible, dense energy, thick, with rotten intentions, to come and speak to you, who really has got no better intentions than what you're saying. Yeah. Not going to do it. So my job is to keep them protected. When, as we all know, when we're working, our job is to keep them from harm and allowing noise to get near them as well, because we're stood in this dense energy. So for me, it's about protection. It's about every day putting that protection up and building it. You've got to build it. Yeah. It's not a case of, I put it up last week, Every day, yeah. you're going to get somebody and you need to know what is to the left of you, what is to the right of you, what are these two energies, which are the male, are the female and the male, mm. and, and where is the balancer, which is the God source. You need to know what you're balancing. Yeah. You need to know that the, the, the left-hand side is a lesser energy. It's a heavy energy. It's a dense energy. That's why the naughty section live in it. 
Does that, yeah. And that's why they're connected to the earth because it, and that's why it's easier for you. And as we walk across the earth, the left and the right foot is absorbing and dissipating, absorbing and dissipating. So every day you get bring in the balance and you bring in that, um, the, the number eight, what's you call the, um, the infinity. infinity. Infinity symbol, and that energy is circulating through you to keep you grounded. Yeah. So you've got to keep grounded. You get to know these first three energies, and this is the only part. We're in six weeks, and we're still only learning here. Yeah. So the first week we did the um, the intuition, <clears throat> and then we talked about the next week. We talked about prayer because for me, prayer is massive. Definitely huge. And we taught and we stripped down the Lord's Prayer. And so basically we could see what, instead of just reading it off parrot fashion, because we've all been taught it since we were kids, yeah. to actually strip it down and what's being asked for. So you understand where your intention is, what you're asking for, yeah. how you're putting to, together this prayer. So when you come to actually putting your own prayers together, you know what you're asking for. Yeah. You know where the power sits. And so the, the first, second week was about the prayer and to speak prayer. To, to hear your own vibration and your own frequency, to know the connection from your heart to your mind and your soul and all the way to the source. Um, and then the next week we did um, protection and then we went through lots of different ways of using obviously crystals, candles, herbs, um, salts, and we, we talked through all the different things what you could use, but also about building your protection. Yeah. In order, so every day comes through prayer and through understanding what this energy is doing. Because if something infiltrates here, your protection comes in, then your prayer comes in, and then you build it. So this is what we've been doing every week. And I said to them, until we, I know that you're you're doing this correctly, we won't move on. Yeah. And then the next week after that was learn about what the chakras are, and again what they contain and what the energy is, male and female energies. And then last week we did the auras. Yeah, in order to bring yeah. in, so we know what level of energy we've, we're dealing with. And then last night was about then, because once we've got these, then I want them to learn a bit about the third eye. Because that way then, they understand what they may be picking up is psychic. Yeah. Because then they've got to learn the difference between what is psychic and then how we're going to lift it over the diaphragm into the heart and then again into to the spiritual. Yeah, Does that I mean, make sense? Uh, it absolutely does, and it? it's great to hear. But I think those solid foundations of teaching, like I, say, I always class myself, both of us being very fortunate that we found the circle that, that we sat in for many years. And it, you know, it's eight years I sat in that circle before yeah. I even give a message. And I didn't. I when didn't, I say that to people, they look at you as if you. you and then no expectations. No. I just sat there. I was happy to be there. Mm. Like so, it was just I a nice night out, isn't it? I lapped it up because <laughs> you could talk to people who didn't think you were a loony. Uh, and, and it was nourishing. Exactly. And, and those two things are so important because the first two things we were told, protection, and they used to liken it to the ready brack advert. Yes, that, that glow around light. you. And yeah. that's what I said to my lot. I mean, last week I had them all doing orographs. Yeah. And actually drawing, sitting there and saying to somebody, put your hand on that piece of paper, let me see the colour of you. So start to see the aura. Because if you can see what's going on in somebody's aura, you know whether you like them or not. Yeah, yeah. You can just, that's your psychic bit coming in. When I do a reading, my first thing is to give me your hands. I take the energy. I now know what's going on. I know if you've got a bad back or a bad knee, because I'm feeling it. Yeah. Before we even open up to spirit. Yeah, that's, a lot of places don't like tapping into that, but I think that oh, actually I, working that way actually but I think opens that's us. Up. Yeah, that's the yeah, part of us. Yeah. Who that's because, not just because we're in our spirit in a physical body, but it's actually learning that it's the physical body that's actually trying to teach us something. Yeah. yeah. So by me saying to you, "Oh, can I just put my hand on you, and I can feel that energy coming through," it's actually there to say, "Do I like you? Do I not? Do I really want your energy in mine?" Have you been saved with me then? Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, you'd have known it well before that. <laughs> but that's the, like the, the way physical way you, side yeah, of us. Yeah. And, and I like the way you brought it at the beginning about Mother Earth and all these things. Mm. I feel, I don't know if it's a new thing in, in the movement or mm. not, but to, for everything separate. Yeah. And I think, well, no, but it's, it's not. It's everything to get. Everything to get. Yeah, when I say that are. to people, yeah. that this is not about your chakras. And your aura, they're not a separate being because they are all one. Yeah. 
Yeah. When we walk across the earth, we're accepting the energy and it's running through us and we're dissipating it. When I'm talking now with my hands, we are not, as a spiritual person, my hands are in the ether. If I was looking at a dog or I was being an animal, my all my four paws are on the floor. So therefore, the energy is then coming through and out back end. Does that make sense? Yeah. But as a human, I'm walking on two feet. So therefore, Mother Earth's energies are coming through me, through the left side of me, up the female side, because that's the giving side of life, around me and down the right, the male side. But my left brain is male, and my right brain is female. So it comes the crisscross, and that's where the infinity comes. So in the heart, it's in the throat where the, the, um, the thyroid sits. So it's there, and then the crisscross comes round. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as it comes in through the left side into the, the throat, it then crisscrosses into my head between the third eye and the crown, comes through the brain, and then that's where we start to then get rid of all the logical, the male stuff. Yeah. And we start to then ground it and all the crap that's because you've gone through that day and you're pushing it out, down, crisscrossing into the throat and all down the male side and all the way back down to Mother Earth and then it burns out into the Mother Earth. Then it's a continuous flow of energy. Here, I've got the continuous flow of spirit. I'm in the ether. I can't understand why, and nobody teaches it. And when I say it to another medium, they go, so, um, watch, I saw why are you working to the left? I mean, the amount of mediums yeah. who work to, the moment the medium gets up, you'll know whether they're psychic or not. I mean, obviously, the first couple of minutes, we're all psychic, because we have to get that connection. But the minute you start work, and they stay on the, the left-hand side, and you can see them motioning and talking, even when you watch their feet, their feet are moving. The psychic. Mm. Do you feel that it's lacking a bit? The, I think it's like a the lot. fundamental knowledge. Yeah, I and mean, all what we. I mean, this is what I've been taught from spirit. I haven't been taught once. I'd done the first two years in the SNU in two thousand, yeah. and walked away <clears throat> after all that evil intent business. I walked away then, and then we opened our own place up. But I then sat and with spirit in my own conservatory for over a year. Didn't do anything, and I sat and learned. And I was, and I'd just done my degree in the So I had to learn about energy and reflexology yeah. and aromatherapy and massage. I had to know what it was to feel energy. I think I always say to people as well, if you want to work with spirit in that way, mediumistically, learn to be a healer. Yeah, because that's a the great best, stepping the best stone. You learn about some of the crystals. best healers yeah. I know are, are actually the best yeah. mediums I know are healers first. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I was a healer first. I had to heal myself. It took me seven, eight years. To get me on the journey. You learn about yourself, you yeah. learn about your body. And everything we're doing is about what we are. So every time I walked in, and obviously being in the place I was in, which was a very dark left-handed energy, was depression and anxiety and death. And mm. no, no, so fighting that every day and then jumping over that border of where the balance is and then stepping into this. So I now know that the two cannot exist in the same space. Yeah. They can't. So if you if you're of living in a depressed energy, that energy will swamp you. Your your good people will have to go and stand over there because the two can't stand in the same place. If you're inviting just high and vibrant spirit, they will come in and swamp you. The naughty section have to go and stand over there because they can't stand in the same space because that's love and light, and they don't want to be infected by it. The two cannot stand in the same space and have this argument. But you've got to be responsible. I always say as well which I 100% agree with you, but I try to tell people as well about being positive, <coughs> about action and your own thoughts, and, and that is your greatest protection as yeah. well. Oh, think, God, yeah. Because then you have the other side where our spirit will sort it, the light will be there, oh, you take yeah. no responsibility. Funny enough, we were talking about that on the way up in the car, about you know how, how many people turn around and say, oh, I don't need protection because spirit will do that for me. Yeah. Oh, please. To stop with your stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and I think this is where I, but I do think also it's in the churches. Yeah. Because that's where they taught this. This is where they've learned this. And they've also had teachers, and they're paying blooming good money to go to Stansted and places of this nature where they're not talking about it. They're being told, somebody has actually told somebody along the line, don't do protection. Yeah. And then nobody well, will tell me any otherwise. At some point, it's some, somewhere along the line, because years ago, when I started, 20 years ago, 20, what, what year are we in? 24. So yeah, it'd be 24 years, wouldn't it? Yeah. I didn't think you were that long, to be fair. Yeah. 
But everything was about protection. Yeah. Now all the older ones have passed and all the newfangled ones have taken over. Now all of a sudden, you know, it's a bit too much hard work, that. Yeah. Let's not bother. But that's where the where the rushing side comes in because like exactly. we developed, we are sat in circle for seven, eight years and we just sat in the energy. Yeah. We ask learning questions, we learning. Yeah. I when I said that inquis- to some- be inquisitive question. You know, don't just sit there and just and I think that's where the religious side comes because it's very dogmatic. This is mm. this is what we're preaching, actually. It stops your intuition. It Thank stops you, you asking exactly. questions. And that's I'm what we're here about. That. Yeah. yeah. And that for me is about, and I think that's why when Spirit said to me, pack everything up. When I finished my degree, they went, pack everything up. I had thousands of pounds off a kit. Do you know what I mean? Oils, crystals, you name it, I had it. Pack it all up. We're done. I went, what? They went, go and sit in your conservatory. We'll teach you our way. And it was an old medium mm. um, from Gatley. I don't know, did you ever serve Gatley when Carl was in charge? Oh, wow. He was a beautiful fella. And, and his wife, Anne, really. And, you know, every day, every time they turned up, they did all the tea and the coffee and everything else. And they were always very beautifully dressed. But then all of a sudden, it'd be like, Carl, darling. And at quarter past seven, they'd go off and they'd come back. They look like they're ready for the theatre. And they'd put, and I mean, really worked up beautiful dresses that she'd made. And he was always in a white suit. And they always made the effort. They did the old way. Do you know what I mean? And then he would start the service. And he pulled me over to one day and he said, can I have a word with you? And at the time, I used to actually do autographs when I was doing the services, and I would do them as Gloria was doing a couple of messages. I would sit there and quite quickly do, do some of his aura and then write as much. It just kept me going. Yeah. And that's why when I say to people, try it, it made me the medium so I am. True, yeah. Made me the medium I am. And people go, <laughs> oh, they're embarrassed to ask somebody. I didn't care where I was. If, if I thought for one moment I could learn something, I got a job by doing someone's feet and doing massage and saying to them, can you just give me a foot while I show you what I do? Practice, I got myself a job. Practice, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I can't understand when I say it to, to the people on, online last last week. Practice. Everybody walks through your door and you just stand against that white wall, mate. Yeah. Just take every opportunity you can to feel it and just say, can you just hold your hand? So let me see what i got. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Shall I tell you a quick funny story? I worked at the hotel and I can say this now, I don't work there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get very familiar with a lot of the clients, guest customers that used to come and a uh, lot of like 70, 80 year old women, women and men. And and after uh, the, <coughs> I used to pull them after for practice. So mm. I could give you a couple of messages. And I used to do that for about a year. Just yeah. practice on people. And I think that's how I learned. I've said that to many people. So get your friends together if you've got some cards or... Pull some cards yourself, yeah. get moving. Moving. And, and, and write it and give it. Don't yeah. be afraid. And and uh, many times I've said to people, no, what are you afraid of? If it's a no, it's going to teach you something. Thank you. I mean, how many times you've heard me many a time? Yeah. Get up there, say no to me. Yeah. When I first said that in the church, everybody really passed out. When I first, I mean, because you never, it was a case of, well, can you take it with you? Shut up. Yeah. Mm. If I, uh, why are we why are we still doing this? If why are we ashamed to say I might be wrong because I'm human? I might not have heard it right. Yes. Say no to and that's why I'm quite it's happy. The ego, isn't it? Of course, yeah, I'm quite happy to say, you know, I don't know, do you know Tom Dick and Harry? Say and as, as I'm saying it, you can feel the energy going over them. So I'm I'm watching the energy flow. Oh no, it's not hitting, it's, it's flowing over him. I know I'm wrong now because spirit is teaching me that. Yeah. And they're already saying, no. No, and I'm, I can feel it being pulled back. I'm quite happy now. Say, say no to me. And people look at me going, what? Say no, because I know you don't know it. No. And you can feel then the energy, the power come back to you. Yeah. But you do. Yeah. Do it. Um, every year, every service I've ever took has been my learning. My learning ground. Oh, that, but there's a misconception. Once you think... You- once you've done the first service, that's it. And I said to people, you never, ever stop learning. Oh. You, you, once you're a medium, you continue learning. Don't ever put yourself on a pedestal. The spirit will knock you right back down. Every time. Every time. I mean, for me, I just think, do you know, it's it's a privilege and an honour. Each and every time I'm able to walk out my door and walk into a church or a place of worship or no matter where it is. I mean, obviously, I do a lot of pubs now. Even when I said to Spirit many years ago, what am I doing a pub for? What am I doing a pub for? 
And this is because how many people of the here would ever walk into a church? Yeah. Why are these people not allowed to hear what you've got? How can we help these people if you're only going to give it to the ones who already believe? So that'll do me. Yeah. And then when they said to me, we will protect you. If something's not right, we will shut you down. And, we'll, and I have had a couple of times when it's happened yeah. where they just shut me down and they went, finish, something's not right. And I have done it. And to be fair, it was a bit of a crap night. But the energy weren't right. But I'd rather work authentically. Exactly. Than, yeah, and I'm quite happy to turn around and say, there's something not right here. Let's just knock it on the head. Other than just sitting there and, and pretending everything's right. Do you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes it, your energy does drop because something, I actually, I'll tell you a funny one. Well, it's not funny, but it is. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a point where the year before, somebody sent me something. And this is why, again, we're talking about naughty stuff. Yeah. Don't think for one minute, just because you're a medium, everyone's going to love you. Oh, yeah. But, oh, hello. The opposite. Oh, yes. Do you want some more water? No, I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Um, anyway, somebody had sent me something and I, I just couldn't twig what was going on. Do you know what? Just something in my energy. And again, where we, because even now, you still get a bit silly, don't you? And you forget to ask. Yeah. You forget to go, excuse me, what's that? <laughs> and I think you just assume that you think you know it. And again, a little bit of a learning thing going on. And um, anyway, somebody sent me something. Well, I couldn't open up. And every time I went to open up, I'm like, are you for real? What's going on here? And in the end, I got Margaret and Manny, and I said, something's not right. Where have we been in the last few weeks? And I had to track it back to every place I've been. So I had to use their heads. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously mine's a bit numb sometimes. And we tracked it back to these certain places and who was there and the reasons. You know, and you had to sort of physically, in my mind, I had to see these people and say, is it there? Is the energy there? Anyway, I tracked it back to where I thought it might have been. Um, and then I thought, right, I'll do some work. So I sat in my conservatory. I cancelled everything for at least 10 days because I knew I had to get this energy right. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was here to teach me something because I'd take my eye off the ball. And then, anyway, we did all the work on it. And we and I said to, said to Spirit, yes, this is. we understand where it's coming from now. Let's not send it back because we're not in, we're not into tick tick for tack. Yeah. Well, oh, Spirit absolutely. did say it to her. We're not here for tick for tap. Send it back to where it's going to be of use to something else, as in transmute it back to Mother Earth or whatever. Yeah. So I said, right, yeah. Anyway, we did all that. And I, you know, and I did some herbs out and some, oil, some nice oils. Because I've got some nice, um, some very powerful oils that I've knocked up and put together and, and things of this nature. And anyway, we did what we had to do. And then about a week later, I had to go off and do a service church. And as I got up, this was going to be the first time I'd opened up. So I thought, right, come on. So we stood outside and we opened up. And I thought, mm, that weren't too bad. Gets in. I could feel the congregation. I thought, oh, it's not too feel too bad. And I started, done the prayer. And I went like this. And all of a sudden, the energy was going. Whoosh. And it was like it was just had this wobble, this major wobble in the middle. Looking to something really wrong here. And in the back of my head, even though I'm going, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking all nice, in the back of my head, I'm going, panic, something's not right. <clears throat> and they're going, carry on, carry on. We'll suss it in a minute. I'm, so I'm giving this lady this reading. It's all just falling at her knees. There's nothing. And I'm thinking, no, no, there's something. And then there's some type of disturbance outside. I thought, that's it. There's a lot of kids outside. So I'm thinking, well, maybe that's what the energy is. Yeah. So whoever in the church goes out, solve them out. And then at that, the door swings open and this particular medium walks in and went, sorry, I'm late. Like that. The energy just went boom. I just blocked all this side of me off. And it was like somebody just pushed this invisible wall over there and he came and sat down. I sat like that. And mentally I went, lost Berlin. We're having none of that. And then all of a sudden the energy just cleared because now we know what it is. Yeah. And then we went bang, bang, bang. And I said to Spirit, don't open it up. Don't want to, I don't want to connect with him. And right at the last message, this lovely little old lady went, 
I want to speak to him. I went, you've not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you've not a chance, love. <laughs> and she went, no. Take the glass bell off him. I need to speak. And I'm like, can I speak to you? Whatever. And and as I went like that, this glass bell shot off him. She came back with this all this information. And he sat there going, no, 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 no. I went, whatever. But I know I'm right. So you're having it. Yeah. And I never say I know I'm right. And I do when I, I know it's right. Yeah. And I know it's a bit egotistical, but I sometimes I just have to sort of sap them off with it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I know spirit at this point are right. I went, whatever. I'll leave you with that. Bang. Right, we're finished. Anyway, he sends me a message afterwards. Oh, when I got home, I remembered that was my grandmother's name. <laughs> right, like you don't know your granny's name. <laughs> anyway, but it was her, and what she'd actually done was a weird energy. She says, because everything has just been parceled up and just been delivered back. Oh, right, right, okay. Like, I need to know. At the end of the service, what she said to me, so like, everything's been parceled up and been delivered back. I was like, oh, because I think it's because he came to the end to, to see whether or not I could work. He'd done something. Yeah, something was happening. And all. because of that, obviously we were sending it to the earth and we were getting rid of it. And obviously Spirit was like, hmm, right, well, if you're going to play them games, we'll have to deliver it right back to your door. Yeah. Wow. And they did. What people forget, though, is that Spirit see everything. And people mm -hmm. think what they do and say has no consequence. consequence. What what goes around comes around. And, and that's, honestly, I could not. I sat there and all the way home in the car with Margaret and Amanda, I was like, did you see that? And I could feel this energy. And we, and obviously, that's my point. Because by the time I get home, my husband's not interested. The kids aren't interested. That's my point in the car where we discuss everything. We yeah. offload everything. Yeah. That's my counselling session. It's important the, part. We have some great discussions. On the way home. Our travels. Of course you do. About. And that's for me, my counselling. That's where I can offload all what the energy I've just picked up on. Yeah. And it was massive. It was massive. Because to show you the bad intention of people. Because again, either jealousy or bitterness or whatever, I don't care sad what it is. Though, sad though. It's sad, know. but we know it's there. Yeah, and you can and feel it. It's... People need to understand it. This is not one of those where everything's love and light. Everything's rosy. Everybody look after you. Everyone loves you. When I say that to people, they look at me like I've got two heads. I feel sorry for people that they yeah. still think yeah. everything's nice. Even what you explained there, it's like... The your awareness, that's it, you knew what it was. And yeah. then it's, it's half the battle, if not more. Mm -hmm. But I've, it's tracking it back. And it was the thought of, why? Why? I, I don't even speak to these people. I don't speak to a lot of people. When I go to a church, excuse me, I know, I know you two, and I know people in the church, but I don't stand there. And there's only one or two where I'd stand and have a cup of tea afterwards or whatever. Yeah. Or I might have my cup of tea in all of them, to be fair, after I've done the service. But I don't sit and they're not all my mates. No one's my mates. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you guys, I can sit and have a good chat with you. And there's one or a few others. But not every church. I served on 20 churches. I couldn't even tell you who's the president. That's how what because I go in, I do my duty and come home. Yeah, That's me, I'm done. Did, yeah. I want a cup of tea before and a cup of tea after. I'm done. Yeah. Let's get a phone. Let's go and find a chipper. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And have some food. That is, that is my, and when people say, oh, Jenny, do you remember when? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen, know what happened 10 minutes ago. You're lucky, were you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that is because once I've given you that message, it's not, I guess it's no longer my concern. If it's correct, it's no longer my concern. If it's wrong, it is my concern because that's now a learning level for the pair of yeah. us. Something went wrong. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But on the whole... That's not my, I've delivered. I've delivered the package. Yeah. It's now down to you to, to carry it out. Yeah, and, it, and that's, everything happens for a reason as mm. well. But what I want to sort of, uh, actually, I have no idea the time now, God, but just sort of coming <coughs> in. I know a lot of, um, when you talked about the, the, the centre you opened, and I mm. remember you, I can remember how you told it me when you could see the beds and yeah. it being filled. So that, that experience you had of healing and obviously of being a working medium, where do you feel now when we talk about the health of the mind, the body, the spirit, mm. where things are going or need to go looking forward now? God, I, it's, you know, I just feel as if, do you know what? I feel for today's mediums. 
I really, really do, because we're really up against it. And, I mean, we've had the, the ability to actually see it as it's happened, as it's yeah. opened it up. Now you've got mediums coming into it, and they don't know if they're left to the right. They don't know who to trust. They don't know where it's going. They don't know. I mean, there's all this about witches and warlocks. Do you know what I mean? Which I've got nothing against. Yeah. If you are one, you are one. And it's, and it's not a case of putting you... But there's a naughty side to that, because it's yeah. like with everything. You've got your good doctors, your bad doctors. It doesn't yeah. matter what profession you go into, what your likes and dislikes are, there's always going to be a good side and a bad side to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Good teachers, bad teachers. Good doctors, bad doctors. Whatever. You're always going to get good witches, bad witches. Good mediums, bad mediums. Do you see? Yeah. You're always going to, no matter where it is. And I think at the minute, everything's been thrown into the pot. And nobody knows who's, whose side anybody's on anymore. Everything's been coloured. Yeah. And everybody's been made to feel to question is wrong. Mm. And that to me, when you've got to be clouded into questioning is wrong, that's where you, your psyche, your something in you has got to turn around and say, something's not right. Yes. And I think we're going down a very, because I do think there's awakening happening. Yeah. And people are waking up to the, to the common rubbish that's out there at this moment in time. Yeah. And I do believe that there is good. There's a lot of good. And there's a lot of good people. And they know what they're doing. But for, for, for everyone that's good, we've got 10 that's bad. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's running the show. The shower. The sh real shower of not very good. And I think if we don't get past this, this beautiful energy that is up and coming is going to fall by its wayside if we don't push it past it. And I don't think spirit will allow that. Do you think fair. it might be a bit of what you'd call like with the tarot cards, the, the tower moment a bit where things have to come to a bit of a halt yeah. so they can restart? Uh, I think, and I, and I, honestly, I do think the system is, like you just said, is coming to a, a point, a pinnacle, where yeah. everything's going to have to come down. All the stupidity and all the nonsense and all the lies and all the blackness will get to a point where it can't go any higher. Because when it gets to the highest, in my in my mind as I'm seeing it now, it's like where the ozone layer is of the Earth. Yeah. It can't go into the universe. Yeah. Man can never get to the moon. I don't care what you say. We've never been to the moon. We can't get out of the, the shell. Yeah. When we get to the ozone layer, where the where for me the glass dome sits, it's like the Simpsons, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But do you know what I mean? That glass dome, we've never been any further than that. I don't care what you say. Yeah. And we can't, they can come in, we can't get out. And I think when the night is, because if that was the case, the nights wouldn't be here. Yeah. If the nights could get out, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be using this as their own. They would have actually gone back to the place where they, they came from. Trying yeah. to feed off the energies, yeah. aren't they? But do you know what? They can't get out neither. So I think once they get to that pinnacle of where darkness comes before the light hits it, then it will crack. Yeah. You so can I mean, say that when you talked about when you're talking about the movement, mirroring what's going on in society yeah, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So it's all but for me, And for me, the movement itself is, I, I love it. And people think I'm against it, and I'm not. I just want this. So true that, yeah. I love it. It's, it's who divide. I am. We can't be divided. We're we can't. in it together. I will go and, if, if a church, I mean, and you know the reasons why I've said I'm not serving no more, which is a time for another time. But the point being is, for me, I would go and serve wherever Spirit sent me. Yeah. And I, if I had to go and serve in hell, because I thought for a minute I could turn one of them, I'd be there in a shot. Yeah. I thought I could get a message through. Does that make sense? Yeah. For me, Spirit will work, send me to wherever it is. When Spirit said to me last year, no more, we're done. I knew they'd had enough. Yeah. And it comes to something when they've had enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, and I love, I love serving. I love that that feeling of grace. I love that feeling of gratitude and giving, and all what we have when we we serve each other. Yeah. And now that's me. Make, that's having to put a price on it. Yeah. When we put a price on it, it taints it. And there's certain wonderful parts when we say about the you know any way you want to put it the the yeah. church is the there's certain really wonderful parts of that tradition yeah. and, and people that have and given, really given and the heart and, exactly. and where they've uh, invested and bought property so these places can be so, and, and exactly. given money freely. But do you not think some wonderful stories? Yeah. Do, you do you not, not do you not think do you not think though a lot of things is that we human beings we forget things 
And I think maybe it's in part, I, I have to believe in a way that everything happens for a reason, the divine, mm. that we, they're showing us that the dark's there yeah. to wake more people up. I, and I, yeah. I say no, bring right. it on more. Yeah, well, yeah. Not, not that the dark's our enemy because they, they are because We've got to have the dark. We've got to have the dark. To teach we? the light. Yes. We need the duality. Yes. The polarity. No, you're right. You bang on. But I think, so I think you need in a way mediums that are working authentically to help teach those that yeah. are and you, so we do no you're right and i think because if everything was nice and shiny and bright who's going to learn anything yeah yeah it's like being in a perfect world like my mum being jehovah's witness they believe that they're all going to be in this paradise kingdom which is nice yeah. for me that's heaven and that's spirit if you want to be in there then fine crack on point being is when you're in there you're still learning lessons but not naughty lessons yeah. because you're not in that energy Mm. we're here to learn that like you just said we've got to have it yeah. because we would never ever know what it's like to be up against it yeah but what coming back and reincarnating yeah. coming it's all about, to the it's school, all about yeah. i mean if you can imagine being in the spirit world and heaven, everything's love and yeah, we're exactly. all floating around in love and life we won't, don't know what we really love is until yeah. we experience what, what hatred is what hatred is yeah. to know the opposite of you've that. got to know the opposite Absolutely. of everything and that is why i'm Gratitude, quite happy appreciation comes in and the, you know, an understanding that this beautiful energy that surrounds us here has to be, and, and I always think, and I know I shouldn't, but I always think there's God having a cigar, <laughs> <laughs> his feet up, and a brandy <laughs> with the naughty ones, like the devil himself, yeah. going, Well, you did well last week teaching them all about that because now they appreciate me more this week. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's how I see, and there they are, feet up. Having a cigar, you know what I mean? A big Castella going, what should we do for next week then? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where should we put some dinner? And I know it sounds awful, but because there is some really evil stuff going on, yeah. which we know about. But we've got it. We've, 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 I think we forgot how to honor, love, and respect mm. and protect the weaker ones. Yeah. And what's what we've got to bring back? We've got to know that there are naughty ones out there. That need a good spanking. And I, when I say it in that manner, it's in a spiritual sense because these people need sorted out. Yeah. But at the same time, we've got to know and we've got to encourage these, the ones that are weaker, yeah. the ones who don't think they've got the energy or they don't think they've got the, the know-how or they don't think they've got the healing ability to stand up and be counted. Do you know what I mean? All of us together. Do you not think, though, as well, I think we live in a society where people sh are shut down and... This is where I don't believe in religion and dogma because mm. it shuts down the conversation. Like now, anybody that's listening to the podcast, we're just talking, we're sharing yeah. our own experiences. Mm. We're not saying this is what you have to believe. <coughs> but we should have the ability to have that conversation mm. if you're in a church, in a centre. Well, you and can. open up. We ha should have that ability because if you, if you feel so strong, why are you frightened of having a conversation if you believe Thank you. in that? Now, when I've said, that, when I've said certain things... In churches, I've been looped upon like I've got two heads. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And even when I had actually one person who said to me, because you know when I work, I work being overshadowed, really, mm. because their faces come through and names and all that palaver. And I had one uh, president actually said to me, you need to be careful, Jennifer. I said, why is that? She said, because when they you mm. know what you do, they will shut you down. Why? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, cancel my services. Cancel my services, what I've got with you, because I don't want you to get upset. I don't want you to get told off. And she went, oh, no, we can't do that, because you fell our church. So in one way, she wants me, but in another way, she's trying to give me a warning that you could have people here who are not going to like what you do, because yeah. what, so what, am I, what is it I'm doing? Mm. What is it I'm doing that nobody else is doing? That's because I've not been down to Stansted and taught, been taught their way. That's what she was saying to me. We talked about this in the previous podcast with Rob of this sort of list that can be given. Mm. And he made a really good point that I'm, I never considered it that way. He said, if, if my grandma was to come in now and be stood right in front of me, he said, I won't be saying to her, right, give me this, 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 this list. He said, I'll be saying, how are you doing? That's I love you, I miss you. I love you, I miss you. What, what have you been up to? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, when I open up, I say to Spirit, right, can we have... Um, I give them my intentions and then they give me their intentions of what we're going to be doing. So when I, I open up and I say, right, 
I want first names, I want last names, I want full names, yeah. I want funny stories, I want sad stories, I want street names, I want health conditions, I want whatever, all the things that these people will absolutely know. I want yeah. things that, and I, I give them this lesson, then they might come to me and say, right, we're doing, I don't know, animals tonight. So I might as well as, yeah. and we're going to try this, this, and this. I say, right, fine, that's. So now we're all primed, ready to go. When spirit come in, I don't stand there and then go, waiting for them to come in and give me all this. Stuff. I've still got to initiate this conversation like we're doing, yeah. and say, all right, love, come on, who are you? What's your name? Where do you want me to go? Who's your loved one? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they, this old lady don't just walk in going, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're, they're, they're funny, they're witty, they're these yeah. beautiful, funny people. They're coming from the loving side of life. They're and they bring, all, yeah. Yeah, they bring all this knowledge. And they're, they're bringing it in. So, and, I mean, obviously, I have, I have a laugh with them, and, but their beautiful personalities all still mean something. Because even though they're coming, they might be giving me something. I'm going, what are you giving me that for? It's not for you to know, love. Give it to her. And I'm doing it. I don't know. I might be doing a dance or whatever. I'm giving it, but symbolically, it also means something. Yeah, it's so true. So this is the only way she's going to listen is by me bringing this daft story in. So I'll give it to her. Do you know what I mean? It, the way they do it is so. Oh, I'm right now. When you call me, it's not about you want to talk to them as if you're missing them and loving them. And do you know what I mean? It's just beautiful. Just being being yourself. Yeah, and, and just that's what it's about. Having all these beautiful. I mean, how lovely is it? How how fortunate are we? Yeah. How beautiful. how fortunate are we to be able to feel yeah. what we do? Yeah. I mean, how beautiful is it? With all these beautiful people have chosen us. Because, like my guy said to me, he said, "When there's a service on, or whatever, when you start work, he says they obviously have to go and pitch me to the spirit." Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right, our medium is working tonight. She's that little fat one that does all the funny bits. <laughs> no, but you can imagine him, can't you? Yeah. Being in the spirit, right? Everybody gather around. Right, our medium's working tonight. And her name's Jenna. And she's a little fat girl that does all that funny bit. And she, she'll only talk to you if you've got your name and your address and everything else. So, on the tip up at seven o'clock or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And this is the information she's able to give. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they, those spirit people then now know whether or not I'm their vibration. Yeah. This is the, because I always also view it as an orchestra. If I'm in the, in the violin section, I can't play a drum. So if the drum section turn up tonight, we're not going to be working. Yeah. The violin section and all the string instruments all queue up because Jenny can hear you first. And all the violins and the cellos and the bass or whatever it is, guitars or whatever it is with strings, all queue up because bit by bit, the drum section's right over there because she's never going to get to you either way. Does that make sense? You might get the odd one who can double up. I think it's really important for people to hear that. And it's, you know, there's, there's people for people, vibrations. Yes. Um, it's just so much, but really enjoyed this podcast. I mean, oh, thank could, you. I know we could talk. Talk forever. forever because, Put, get a sleeping you know, bag and let's get in. Absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like you've shared so much there, Jenny. We really appreciate you because you've come down to the Pepper Mountain and shared your time with us. You're welcome. And, and, and obviously we've had the privilege of welcoming many mediums through our door and you, you are one of the most authentic. You, oh, you are, say. You're a very good example of being very authentic. Thank you. And I think you're a good example to other people who say, you know, she's just being real. And I can just be that. And spirit are picking you because you're you. And I yeah, think that's and that's what we've got to remember. Yeah. Be you. Yeah. If nothing else, start being you. If you, you can't be a medium in 12 weeks. I, I, and I can't get over that, but people expect to be mediums in 12 weeks. Too soon. Be you. Feel it, know it, and actually just absorb it and love it. If you can do that, that's it. Life, love yeah. the spirit. Well, spirit will take you the rest of the way. And enjoy it. Have fun with it. That's as well. it. You are here to enjoy. <laughs> enjoy Honestly, I've journey. loved every bit of it because I mean, I can laugh and I can cry all the way. And there's a funny story about all of it. Do you know what I mean? There's every. I've been here all day just telling stories. <laughs> Yeah, you have to come back to the next one. But just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. We'll be putting the links on 
um, if you want to connect with Jenny, if you want to perhaps be part of a group or some of the work she's going to be doing, or you know, if she's doing workshops maybe near you, or anything yeah. like that, we can connect with her. Well, thank you so much. Send lots of love to everybody who's watching and listening. Thanks See you so later. Much. Thank you.